What do you do on Sundays? We talk about Kate Blanchett, the acting, the costumes, the awards, but mostly the Blanchett of it all. Oh, oh. I'm not acting. <laughs> you think this is a love affair? I saw you, Erica, meeting in the middle. This is Sundays with Kate, and I'm your host, Murtada El Fadl. Welcome to Sundays with Kate, the podcast series about the films of Kate Blanchett. Every week, we choose a Kate Blanchett film for discussion. We are now in the final stretch of our final season. And this time, once again, we go back to her early career, exactly to 2001 and Charlotte Gray, another one of her many titular roles. This week, I am flying solo. So it's just going to be me talking to you about Kate in Charlotte Gray. Charlotte Gray is directed by Gillian Armstrong in her second collaboration with Kate after Oscar and Lucinda. They obviously enjoyed working together in that film and reunited here. I think to diminishing results. While Lucinda was weird and singular, I think Charlotte Gray is more sedate and conventional. But I'm a little bit kind of getting way ahead of myself. Let's go back to what Charlotte Gray is. It is adapted from the novel by Sebastian Folks, which was published two years before the film came out in 1999. The adaptation is by Jeremy Brock, who also wrote the screenplay for Mrs. Brown, who's Judy Dench, which we discuss in our special episode about Dame Judy. Jeremy Brock also wrote The Last King of Scotland, which won Forrest Whitaker a Best Actor Oscar. The crew of this film is also really top-notch. Armstrong gathered quite a group. The costume designer is Janty Yates, who always works with Ridley Scott and has costumed everything from Gladiator to House of Gucci. The cinematographer is Dion Beebe, who worked with Jane Campion in In the Cut and with Michael Mann in Collateral and won an Oscar for Memoirs of a Geisha. And as you can see, these people are at the top of their profession. The cast includes Where Do You Go Bernadette co-star Billy Crudup in his first collab with Kate and Michael Gambon and the late, great Helen McCrory. Okay. What is Charlotte Gray about? It is about a Scottish woman who was recruited for what was called the Special Operations Executive. That was a secret British organization during the Second World War. According to my sources, and my sources are Wikipedia, um, its purpose was to conduct espionage, sabotage, and reconnaissance in occupied Europe and later in occupied Southeast Asia against the Axis powers, that is... Germany, Japan, and Italy, and to aid local resistance movements. So this Charlotte Gray is fictional uh, character based on this novel by Sebastian Folks, but her story is based on the reality of this special operations executive. In the movie, um, Charlotte falls in love with a pilot in the war, early in the film, played by Rupert Penry Jones, and when his plane is shot down in France, she volunteers for a mission to try and find what happened to him. There, she gets embroiled in the work of the French resistance and one particular family. That family has a communist son and his troubled father. That's Billy Crudup and Michael Gambon. And they are also hiding two Jewish children in their countryside house from the Vichy regime, which was collaborating at the time, of course, when the movie takes place around 1942 with Germany. Charlotte Gray came out in the period in which I referred to in previous podcasts as Kate Blanchett's wilderness years. Um, this is the period post-Elizabeth and before The Aviator. Um, I think we got a lot of films that didn't quite work. So many of them we've discussed here, like Veronica Guerin, The Gift, Bandits, in these films, Kate is always good, and there is always something that makes these movies watchable. And she particularly is very watchable, but there is also something that makes them maybe just slightly not work. Um, and so you can see that the films I just mentioned never sort of 
jump to the top of her filmography. They're not her most memorable exactly. And Charlotte Grey definitely falls into that. It's not the most memorable film Kate Blanchett has been in. And I can't really pinpoint why. The filmmaker, Julian Armstrong, is very talented and someone Kate has worked with successfully before. The story is about war and love and betrayal set against the Second World War. So it had the potential to be sweeping, romantic and epic. And also, there have not been that many movies about the women of the Special Forces executive. I'm sure there's many fascinating stories about their work during the Second World War. So that in itself should have made this movie more interesting than than it is. But somehow this film, for some reasons that I can't pinpoint exactly why, so I will try, just doesn't work. But it is not without its pleasures. So let's start first with a couple of scenes that I'm going to dissect. And there are two big set pieces in the film. Um, And they sort of are the two set pieces that bring the narrative together. So by dissecting these two scenes, we are going to try and find out what works in Charlotte Grey and what doesn't work. The two scenes that I chose to dissect highlight what I think are the two main themes of Charlotte Grey and what I think if Charlotte Grey was successful, it would have been successful at these two scenes. The first is life during the Vichy regime in France and how the French resistance operated and lived. And the second is is, of course, the love story between the Kate Blanchett character and the Billy Crudup character. But let's start with life in Vichy, France, and the resistance, and what they were doing at that point. So the scene is Kate as Charlotte Grey is dropped by a parachute into France, and she has, that's in the countryside, and she has to meet her contact. That contact is a woman played by Helen McCrory, the late, great Helen McCrory. Um, And then what happens in that scene is that they decide to meet in a cafeteria and Kate goes in, sits down. Um, Let's call her Charlotte. (laughs) I keep calling her Kate. Charlotte goes, sits down in the cafeteria and Helen McCrory as Francois appears. And the scene is shot from many different angles. The, The cafeteria sort of appears a little bit claustrophobic, Um, There is tension in the scene because the minute Francois comes and sits down, she tells Charlotte, I'm being followed. And Charlotte has to give her uh, bullets or what look to me like bullets. And and but they are sort of wrapped up as a gift. And she she says to her, I am being followed. Maybe I should not take this gift. But then she takes it anyway. And what happens is that the police of the collaborationist regime comes in, that's two officers, and starts asking everyone in the cafeteria for their papers. And sort of like, we just hear this in the background. I think this is where Gillian Armstrong really frames it well. The the camera is firmly on Helen McCrory and Kate has her back to the camera. But the scene works well. And we're just hearing the policemen sort of talking to the other people. We don't actually see what they're doing. But they're asking people are giving them their papers. They're inspecting. Until they came to front, they come to Francois. And what happens there, of course, is something is wrong with her papers. I don't know. Um, we are not privy to that. But they ask her to empty all her pockets. And, of course, the gift that Charlotte just gave her with the bullets is there and they they ask her to open it and of course once the once they see what's in there they arrest her and Charlotte is left there sort of saved because they don't ask her any more questions or ask for her papers or anything she's there safe but Francois has been arrested I think the scene is good it's full of tension it shows us how vulnerable Charlotte Grey is, not knowing anybody, not in a new land, and at the same time, how dangerous it is to sort of be working for the resistance, to be working for the allies in Vichy, France. All of that happens in the scene, which is a really big, great setup. And I really loved it. And I thought 
both Kate Blanchett and Helen McCrory played it really well, and it was shot and framed very well. But that's it. That is sort of was the highlight of that part of the story. And we never get any other scene like this that sort of tells us more of what the French resistance was was doing and how they were coping, or even what Charlotte's Grey mission is. Because basically after that, Billy Crudup, who was her first main contact, tells her, oh, it's not safe for you. I am going to take you to my father's house in the countryside. Um, and that's where he's hiding the two um, Jewish children. And once she gets there, she's basically a nanny for the kids. And the film sort of tries to to build a connection between Charlotte and these two children who have lost um, their parents and who are in grave danger. But I think a more interesting way for the movie to push this narrative forward could have been to balance that with more of what we saw in that scene with Helen McCrory as Francois. More of that tension of how this mission is very dangerous to everybody. We don't get that again unfortunately. The other scene is a bit later in the story, as the friendship between Charlotte and Julian, played by Billy Crudup, deepens and they sort of come together. Later in the story, the Germans finally come to the village where Julian and Charlotte are, and the tanks are all coming in. It's a big procession of tanks. It's, it's sort of a big set piece. And Julian, who is this rebel, this communist, this resistance fighter, can't bear to see the Germans invade his village. And so he's standing on the side of the street. The whole village is out looking at these tanks coming into their village. And he starts yelling and screaming and shouting the names of the village people that have disappeared, that were arrested, that were killed. It's sort of very moving what he's doing and also very brave. And as this movie has set up to us early in the movie, this is a story about bravery, about people who rose up to the occasion during the war. So he's trying to do that, but also what he's doing is reckless because he is shouting at tanks. He is literally screaming at German tanks. He could be crushed if any of these tanks just squeezed him down and br- and drove over him, or he could be, of course, killed by any of the German soldiers in these tanks. So Charlotte sees all this, and she runs to him to try and stop him yelling and screaming and drawing attention to himself, no matter how brave what he's doing is. And she kisses him to stop him from yelling, to silence him, to save him, she kisses him. And the scene become, turns into this romantic, big, huge romantic gesture because they have been getting t- closer together. And now this kiss sort of seals that friendship or brings up all these feelings that they have not been able to acknowledge or because everything's around them is so is so high tension that they're not able to acknowledge this love. And so it becomes this romantic set piece. But does it? Unfortunately, I think that the way that Gillian Armstrong frames and cuts the scene and what her editor does weakens it because for most of it, It's a very, very wide shot, which of course we have to get the wide shot to see the tanks. But as the kiss is sealed, I don't think there is enough of the kiss in the scene. And there is not enough to show us how romantic this is. Um, It could have been. It could have been this great romantic sweeping moment, but it's not. And I think it's the way that it's framed and edited that that's why it kind of doesn't work. I wish it did. But Charlotte Gray is not without its pleasures. And chief among them, of course, is Kate Blanchett. Charlotte Gray is a great part for her. This is a character who announces at the beginning of the film, I want to be brave, and goes about trying to do just that. 
even if the story, like I just mentioned, becomes a bit uneven later, this is still a really good character. As critic Claudia Puig said in USA Today, quote, This fully drawn heroine reveals many aspects of her complex personality. She is brave, brainy, sexy, principled, and compassionate. It sounds silly even to list these traits, but women on film are rarely allowed to be all those things in one movie. Not surprisingly, because she is one of the most talented and versatile actresses around, Blanchett makes the most of the opportunity. End quote. And I agree with Poic. I think Blanchett does make the most of the opportunity for sure. And Armstrong and the cinematographer Dion Beebe really frame her and light her so beautifully. Her face is luminous at all points. She conveys so much looking at the screen or at her co-stars. Longing, love, fear, revulsion. Everything is so transparent on her face. If you just want a film to watch Kate, this is definitely a treat. The close-ups are plenty in Charlotte Grey, starting from the very beginning, because this movie starts perfectly with a close-up of Kate. She's in a train, and we get the side of her face, and then her voice comes on in the voiceover. So, if you are looking for... Two hours of close-ups aplenty. Charlotte Grey is the movie for you. I think also Charlotte Grey contains the single most memorable and affecting close-up of Kate's early career. This is another scene later in the film. She is sitting in a table with Michael Gambon. They are sort of bonding, talking about life before the war. They're sharing a drink and... He toasts her and she lifts her glass up to toast him back. And as the close-up comes to her face with the glass and the toast, her eyes well up with tears. And a small smile begins to form as she raises the glass to Michael Gambon. This is another beautiful close-up. And I remember that this scene, before I watched the movie, this was one of the gifs that I've always used for years because Kate just looks... Her face is so full of emotion in that moment, even without any context. I first actually saw this as a gif and not in the movie. Even without any context, her face is full of so much emotion that I've used this gif to like congratulate people, to toast people. So it is a reason why I think I liked Charlotte Gray, despite what my criticisms might tell you. Otherwise, I did like it. Um, Other close-ups, this close-up is... 15 minutes into the movie, so if you just want to go watch this, you could do that. Um, There are other great close-ups of her. There is a scene where she is watching Billy Cruda play with the two boys, the kids that she is taking care of as she's hanging clothes outside. The close-ups there are also great. Um, Another is another scene where there is a big close up of Kate is a scene where she's out in a road in the countryside and Germans and she has a conversation with another character. We don't want to get into that. But anyway, the character leaves her and she's just there as German soldiers are march are marching behind her. And so she just stands there frozen as the German soldiers march towards her and pass her. And so at one point, she's surrounded by German soldiers from all sides. And this is so gorgeously shot and framed. And all of it is just staying on her face as we see all the emotions on her face. So again, for the close-ups alone, Charlotte Gray rocks. Thank you, Gillian Armstrong. Thank you, Dion Beebe. The critics at the time certainly noticed these loving close-ups that I am enamored with. Stephen Holden in the New York Times said, quote, When Kate Blanchett casts a knowing look, her, the awareness she communicates feels like profound intuition, secretly wrestled from the bottom of the well of knowledge. Her eyes narrow and flicker with a gleam of reflected firelight, and her cherry lips spread into a Cheshire cat smile that's impish, imperious, and impassioned all at once. 
Miss Blanchett's mercurial face is so fascinating that in the film's many close-ups, her features almost seem to melt across the screen. Like Meryl Streep, the actress she most resembles, she is a natural chameleon. Her talent for submerging herself in a character is so highly polished that there is barely any connection between the headstock romantic she plays in Charlotte Grey and, say, the voracious working-class floozy she portrays in The Shipping News. Unquote. While Holden is clearly a fan of Kate's, he was not so enamored with the film itself. He says, quote, Charlotte Grey finds Miss Blanchett doing everything humanely possible to hold together a handsome and high-minded film whose incongruities and lapses in narrative coherence leave you puzzled and ultimately unmoved. The movie works so diligently to convey a spirit of heroic uplift and fails so completely that it feels like a tragic misfire, unquote. In fact, the Claudia Puig review I quoted earlier is one of the very few positive ones I could find. And as a result, the film was hardly released in the United States at all. At its widest, it only made it onto 52 screens. It was a December limited release and was perhaps counting on critical raves to get awards buzz and expand. And when that didn't happen, it faded away. But 2001 was a busy year for Kate Blanchett. She had four other movies released. The three other ones were The Shipping News, Bandits, and of course, The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Rings. Obviously, Lord of the Rings was widely seen, and her portrayal of Galadriel would become one of her most iconic roles. And Bandits has its fan, and is still remembered today for Kate channeling Bonnie Tyler. And that song... And even the shipping news at the time was more seen than Charlotte Grey. So I think for sure Charlotte Grey is the better movie of the two. Charlotte Grey sparks the life in its final stretch, in two scenes in particular, set after the war. The pilot she fell in love with at the beginning of the story and thought he died in France turns out to be alive. They meet up, but she nicely and thoughtfully declines to get back together, telling him that she had already mourned for him. Blanchett is really wonderful in this scene, showing us how Charlotte has become a different person during the war. She delivers on that early declaration, I want to be brave. By making this decision, she has become brave. And then we get the romantic finale we deserve, So the relationship between Charlotte Grey and Julian was tentative, and the film never allowed it to become the big sweeping romance it could have. It does give us a final scene that is full of romance, and Blanchett and Crudup live up to it, pulling off a lovely final coda. So that's Charlotte Grey. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope I did this movie justice. I think I recommend it, if only for those wonderful, lovely, and many close-ups. And that wraps up this episode on Charlotte Gray. You can follow me on Twitter at M-E underscore says, and follow the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Sundays with Kate. Join me next week for the season finale. And until then, thank you for listening.